This month's talk is on exploding energy levels. Everybody always wants more energy. I mean, the, well, probably the one thing that people ask me most is how can I get more energy? Is there anything I can do to get more energy? So we're going to go through a whole ton of different things. Most of it is super simple. It's really easy to implement. It might even surprise you and say, is that it? Is that all I really have to do to get more energy? Yeah, but it's a little bit plus a little bit plus a little bit plus a little bit will get you a whole lot. So if you implement some of the things, just some of the things that we talk about, I guarantee you're going to start seeing some changes. So how can I get more energy? I can sum it up in three things. Drink lots of caffeine and energy drinks. Eat lots of candy bars and soda. And take drugs. All right, the talk's over. Is there any questions? You know, I can guarantee you all of those will actually give you a surge, a boost of energy. But is that really a good option to go with those ones? No. No. Okay, there's a lot of uh, potential things that can go wrong with some of those things. Drinking energy drinks. I know nobody here drinks energy drinks, right? Of course not. But the majority of people out there do, and I really don't think that they understand what's going on with this. So it's only a two-minute clip. It's a real simple, quick one. But uh, just listen up, and we'll talk a little bit about it after. New report out tonight contains a real surprise. In just four years, the number of people who go to the emergency room after drinking energy drinks has doubled from 10,000 to more than 20,000 people in the ER. So what has changed, and what are the drinks doing? ABC's Lisa Stark has a caffeine experiment of her own. On YouTube, downing these energy drinks is a game. Lots of fun. But this new government study calls consumption of energy drinks a rising public health problem. Of those 20,000 emergency room visits in 2011, 42% reportedly had mixed the energy drink with another stimulant, like Adderall or Ritalin, or with alcohol. But 58% reportedly used energy drinks alone. So what might be going on to send someone to the ER? Blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up, and then they'll start to feel the effects. Heart racing, heart skipping, panic attack symptoms, irregular heart rhythms. Caffeine is a drug. In fact, the most popular drug in the world. You can feel and see the effects on the body. I'm down the equivalent of about four cups. Doctors took a look at my brain before caffeine, and here's after. The blood flow dropped 40%. It's like a 40% drop in the blood flow to your brain, so that's a lot. That lower blood flow is still within normal range, but those constricted vessels meant my blood pressure shot up. A cup of coffee alone won't send you to the ER, and the most popular energy drinks have less caffeine than that strong cup of coffee you buy out. So what's going on here? There's other substances in them which are completely unregulated, which can add to the caffeine or the stimulant nature of the drinks. Tonight, the trade association representing the beverage industry said the drinks are safe and denounced the hospital study, saying the limited information makes it impossible to understand the actual role, if any, of energy drinks in these hospital visits. Still, doctors are calling for a whole lot more study and are on the lookout for the next patient to come through the door. Lisa Stark, ABC News, Washington. All right. So, you know, she starts off by saying, what a surprise. I mean, is that really a surprise that these energy boosting uh, supplements, these drinks, are sending people to the ER? No, it's not much of a surprise. How about hot chocolate? It has some caffeine in it, too. As much as is that really major? No, not even close. Okay. Not even close. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of... Uh, things they talk about. They talk about the heart rate going up. You know, they, they did the MRI on the woman who drank. She has said equivalent of four cups. That's not like four mugs like most people drink. That's four measured cups, which is really like a, that's probably your, your average uh, large size, your venti or something like that from Starbucks or whatever. So it's not like she's having an ungodly amount of, of uh, coffee in there. But it, it said that, that it reduced the blood flow to her brain by, do you remember how much? 40, 40%. 40%. Could you imagine 40% blood less, less blood going to your brain? And then they follow up with saying, you know, but you know, the experts say that's, that's still within normal limits. That's still within the range. I don't know about you, but, but I want all my blood going to my brain. I, I don't want 40% less of it going there because it's going to absolutely affect the way your brain works. So the single most influential impact on energy levels is, anybody want to guess? It's a part of your body? 
Your brain? Bingo! The, were you there when I was creating this doc? No. Yes, it's your brain. Your brain drives everything. You know, you've all been to my talks before. You know we talk about chiropractic and it's not about back pain. It's about the nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, and so forth. Your brain oversees and regulates everything. If it's in a highly stressed out state or irritated state or it's not healthy and well, it's not going to be able to process everything properly and you're going to just totally drain and deplete your energy levels. So that's a huge one. And there's a lot of things that affect brain function. And we're going to talk about quite a few of them here today. What's the only nutrient that's been shown to enhance performance for any highly strenuous activity? Water. You were out there when I was preparing this thing too. Absolutely, it's water. Your body is 80% water on estimates. All right? So if you dry up, so goes your energy. Water is crucial. It has conductive values. There's a lot of electrical impulses traveling through the nerves throughout your whole body. You need to stay very well hydrated. If you're not, you will deplete a lot of your energy levels. So if you've been, again, all of you have been to at least one or more of my talks. I talk about water all the time. If you're not drinking enough water, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You got to go. I'm just kidding. All right, but you really have to get that water intake in on you. Oh, um, question. Yeah. Water, can you get it through fruit and juices and other sources? Or sure you can, but drink, drink, drink pure water. 100% pure, pure, pure water. Yep. Pure water. Absolutely. Start your day off right. Get a great night's sleep. We have a handout called 33 Secrets to a Great Night's Sleep. Here's a few of the bullet points. If you need, if you're, if you're suffering with some sleep issues, grab that handout. Tammy can grab one for you. It's probably around here somewhere. But eight hours minimum. Some people say, oh, I can get away with five. I can get away with four. I can get away with seven. Whatever. I'm telling you, you need eight hours. Your body, it's when it heals. It's when it repairs. It's when it's going to rebuild itself. You need that to build up your energy stores. Complete darkness. I have room darkening shades in my, in my room, much darker than these. So when I go to sleep, I put those down. If I wake up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, the sun's already been up for at least an hour or so, at least during the summertime. That doesn't wake me up. Total darkness is what you definitely want. If you have an alarm clock, turn it so it's away from you mostly. When I, when I see that alarm clock angle straight at me, it's really bright in a totally dark environment. So get rid of your night lights, get rid of all those things, turn that alarm clock away. All right? If you have electronics in the room, if it's a TV, a computer, or a phone, get them out. You know, your room is to really sleep. Just reserve that for sleeping. Watch some television if you have to in your live room or something, but get the electronics out. Those electromagnetic waves can actually interfere with um, different components in your brain, with REM sleep, and, and prevent you from actually getting a good night's rest. So those are just some of those things. You really want to allow that brain to just shut down and help to uh, rest a bit. Use some cold water in that shower. I recommend you take a shower daily, for one, for hygiene purposes alone, but definitely every once in a while, just let that, let that cold water run on you. You, know, you don't have to let it run on your entire body. I built up the courage finally to do it, and basically I just step back and I let it just run over my head, my face, my neck. Wow. That's definitely one way. Take a nice hot shower, but then afterwards, just let that cold water run over there. You'd be amazed as to how much you just wake up simply by doing that alone. Dress in bright colors. Here's a really interesting one. Um, studies show that those, those who dress in brighter studies tend to be more positive and more energetic just by simply dressing alone. You know, if you dress in dark, dreary, drab colors, you project the dark, dreary, drab image to those, and those will project the same image back to you, and it actually depletes your energy levels. Where if you see somebody walking around in bright, vibrant, Floridian-like colors around here, you can't help but look at them and smile and laugh and giggle. You know, and then they're going to smile and laugh, and it's just a natural booster. There's actually been studies on this stuff. So something as simple as just dressing in brighter clothes can elevate your energy levels a bit. Open the blinds and let the sun shine in. That's not out there today. All right, but sunshine helps produce vitamin D in your body. All right, your body converts the sunshine in your skin into vitamin D, and vitamin D can help out with so many things. Mental function, mood, immune system, energy levels, you name it. But unfortunately, there's not too much of that around here from time to time, so you really want to try and supplement with some of this stuff. Okay, so... I recommend supplementing with vitamin D just about on a daily basis. 
unless you're out there being exposed with your arms and your legs and your face for at least 20 to 30 minutes per day without sunscreen. All right? If you're not getting that daily, get yourself a little bit of vitamin D for that. Eat a solid breakfast. I mean, that's just good for, that's just common sense for any health related thing. But energy is a huge one with that. If you're not nourishing your body first thing in the morning, let's say you only get four hours of sleep and you don't eat anything in the morning. What are you running on? It's called empty. All right, you gotta get yourself some sleep and then you gotta nourish yourself to, to start the day right. So, people ask me, well, what's, the, what's the, uh, the ratios? How much protein, how much carbs, how much fats? You know, it's not a big deal. Just get some nourishment in there. Carbs is gonna be one of the major drivers of energy. So you definitely wanna have at least higher amounts of carbs in the morning and lower as the day goes on. Proteins you can keep pretty high throughout the day, sp more specifically toward the end, and fats are really good for you, the good fats, you're going to want to have fats in basically every single one of your meals. But definitely keep nourishing yourself. Some examples, we went over some of this in previous talks. Oatmeal is an awesome one to start with. All right? Add some fat to it from coconut and eat that. Hard boiled egg with a whole grain toast and some olive oil. Use some olive oil on your toast instead of butter. Olive oil is loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. It's also anti-inflammatory. Not only will it help give you some energy because of the fat, but it will also help with a whole host of other things too. Green tea or hot water with lemon. Green tea has been equated almost to coffee, caffeinated coffee, with regards to stimulation to the body. It's just a bit more healthier. So green tea would be a great option as well. Green tea is loaded with antioxidants so that it's actually more healthier than coffee, and it also has catkins. Catechins enhance your mood and elevate your energy levels as well. Real simple. Vary your routine. Don't get stuck in a rut. Uh, the brain responds to new experiences by releasing a rush of neurotransmitters to your brain, to your body. Basically like dopamine. Most people have heard of dopamine. And that can actually make you more alert, give you more energy, and so forth. Just switch it up. And it doesn't have to be huge changes. Everything I'm talking about is real simple, easy changes. Take a different route to work. You know, Monday through Thursday, I drive to work the same way, I drive home for lunch. I drive back, I drive home. Friday comes and I have to run an errand, guess where I'm going without even thinking of it. I drive right to work and then I go, oh my gosh, I gotta go on the other side of the mountain. And now I'm late for my appointment, I'm 12 minutes out of the way, I just waste the gas, because my brain is just stuck in a rut. Mm, and I'm just sort of going through. So if you challenge your brain, even just little differences, you'll actually start creating new neural pathways and your brain will grow and you'll actually get a lot more energy doing that. Switch up your exercise routine. If you do a lot of cardio, start lifting some weights. Join a gym, go swimming, go for a walk, go for a jog, go bicycling, start some yoga, Pilates, do some stretches. I don't care, but do something different and start switching it up because your body's going to get used to the same routine and you got to change things around. Your brain will grow, not just your, your muscles and your body. Change your meals, get some new recipes. You know, I think uh, if, if I took a poll, probably the average person eats about 12 meals, maybe 15. And they eat the same ones week after week after week. When you go to a restaurant, do you order the same meal at the same restaurant? You know, I like to go to uh, Cortese and I like to have the steak Milanese style. I'm guilty of that, by the way. My wife, she would nail me with that one right now. So, yes, I like to go to certain restaurants to get certain meals. But, you know, we also tend to find that we cook the same meals for ourselves at home. So vary it up. You're getting a lot of good nutrients sometimes with these meals, but you're getting the same nutrients and you're not getting other ones. So constantly try and switch things up. And it could be a chicken dish that you just serve eight different ways, as opposed to the one or two ways that you always do now. So you can still eat what you like, but just use different spices, switch it around a bit. Guarantee you'll, you'll, you'll actually enjoy eating once again. If you're right-handed, brush your teeth with your left hand. <laughs> you'll probably stab your cheek and jab your gum line a little bit here and there, all right? But it'll be worth it. It'll be awkward as can be. You might choke yourself a little, but you know what? You're totally, there's a lot to brushing your teeth. Try and just do it with your left hand right now. Just see how it feels. 
It's kind of weird. You probably, uh, you know, you might jab your nose or something. But you have you have so many different muscles that are being utilized for pulling it. Your chest, your shoulder, your arm, your delts, your forearms, your extensors. You got to turn that brush around. Then you got to flip it around and go the other way. And then you got to resist by pushing your head against the brush and pull. I mean, there's a whole lot to brushing your teeth that you don't even think about because you're just uh, you just do the same thing over and over. Your jaw muscles get built up more on one side versus the other because of that. So, switch it up. Try something simple like that. Okay? Nowadays, it's what outside? Snowing. Okay? People are going to start shoveling. Don't shovel the exact same way the entire driveway or sidewalk. Do it left-handed. Do it right-handed. Do an over-grip. Do an under-grip. Throw it over your shoulder. Pull it over your hip. There's so many variations you can do to just simply shoveling snow. But again, you're building things symmetrically, you're using different muscles like you never do, and your brain's constantly re-networking and building it, releasing dopamine and other neurotransmitters, and you'll actually be happy shoveling the snow in your driveway. How's that sound? Simple. Take a hike. Go on, get out of here. Take a hike. Go for a power walk on your lunch. That'd be great. Park at the furthest parking spot at work or the grocery store, or wherever. Don't try and go to the closest one. So if that's your building right there, try and park out here. That'd be great. Don't be like this person. We'll do everything and anything possible to get to the closest parking spot. How many times do you see people, you know, you're driving, let's say Sam's Club, because they're just nuts all the time. But, you know, there's a parking spot here, and then there's about eight cars, and they see one person walking up. <laughs> With their, with their stroller. So they pass the eighth parking spot, and three parking spots less, they sit and they wait for that person to unload their car. So they're sitting there for like five or six minutes, just so they pull out, go in, and then they pull in. And what they say? Three spots? Are you kidding me? That's unbelievable. Maybe some of you are, are, are guilty of it. I don't know. But I think that's insane. So try and park the furthest away and actually just get a little more cardiovascular activity. Veg out all day long. Now, I don't mean just sit around and do nothing. All right? When I say veg out, I mean snack throughout the day, particularly as many colorful vegetables as you can. Get it? Veg out, vegetable, veg out. Very good. Okay. So it's going to fill your body with all sorts of nutrients, phytonutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, all sorts of things. And that's going to help get you healthier. There's a few list of uh, uh, some really powerful probably nutritious vegetables that are on there. Some of you may eat, some of you, of you may be surprised with. But cabbage, cauliflower, kale, watercress, Brussels sprouts. We have Brussels sprouts at least weekly at my place. We love it. It's so easy to prepare. I'm not talking about the, you know, the boiled kind, the squishy ones. Ugh, I don't like those. But if you bake them in the oven with some oil and some spices, oh my gosh, they're fantastic. The fiber in all the vegetables helps to stabilize blood sugar and insulin levels. So that second slide that I showed you where I said, you know, the three things you can do are consume energy drinks and coffee. Uh, what was the second one? Soda and candy bars. Soda and candy bars. And the third one was do lots of drugs. All right. So your sugary things like your soda and your candy bars mm -hmm. and stuff like that dumps a whole bunch of sugar and glucose into your body, which ramps up your energy levels, spikes it but it dumps a bunch of insulin in to try and counteract that and you come crashing down. So your insulin levels and your blood glucose levels are constantly going up and down every time you do that. When you have more fibrous type foods, like vegetables or avocados, which is the next bullet point, um, those help slow the release of that sugar and those carbohydrates into your bloodstream and you don't get those highs and lows. So that's just a, a simple right there, fiber, a great one helps prevent the spikes, insulin levels, as well as it also provides your brain with healthy omega-3 fats. Everyone here, I'm going to give you a wonderful compliment. Inside your head is a bunch of fat and water. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that the best thing you ever heard? At least today anyway. But your brain is comprised of mostly water and fat. So you want to have good fats provided in there. And omega-3s is the best way to get some of those best fats. Studies show that a 30-minute power nap has the ability to reduce stress, increase energy levels, and improve memory. So try and get a little bit of a nap here and there. You know, I'm not big for naps. 
I don't do one myself because I just I have so many other things that I do that give me plenty of energy. So you know when I go through this, it's not like oh my gosh, that's a long list. I'll never be able to do anything if I have to do everything on this list. No, it's for you to pick and choose. Some people don't have time to take a 30 minute nap. You know, get it at work. I thought that was just amazing that somebody could balance yeah. on something like that. And you know, hopefully this little guy right here, maybe we'll call that black tea. Hopefully he's not drinking a soda. You know, so he's got a nice, a nice iced black tea or something there. But catch some, uh, catch some Z's. Stretch every single day. Stretch how often? Every day. How often? Every day. Every day. Okay. So do some stretching every single day. And it doesn't take long. How long does it take? Three to five minutes. Fantastic. Okay. It's enough to give you a boost of energy. Here's five or six real simple ones. You just reach your hand, you, you clasp your fingers together, you turn them up, you reach up. I'm not going to do it now, but otherwise my shirt will come out of my pants. But you reach up as high as you can, get on your tippy toes, bend over to one side as far as you can to feel that stretch on that side. Hold it for about five or ten seconds. Come on back down, do it again, other side. It'll take you a total of 14 seconds to do on both sides. When you're done with that, do some peck and shoulder stretches. I don't often tell people to do it in the corner. She's not in trouble. We didn't send her to the corner. All right. I usually have people do it in between a door jam, but that's a great way to do it. Most of the time, we're like this. So many people are, are poor posture, just rounded shoulders, heads looking down. Everything in here is all tense and tight. You really want to open it up, expand those chest muscles, stretch them out, stretch the shoulders out, get the head back. It's going to open up your thoracic cavity. You'll be able to breathe easier. You'll get a lot more energy just simply doing that. But do the pec stretch. Do it in the corner. That's fine. Hold it here. Squeeze back in. And you want to hold this one for at least 20 seconds. You really want to lengthen those muscles. 20 to 30 seconds would be great for that. Simple. Hamstrings. Does anybody not know how to stretch a hamstring? Who stretches them on a daily basis? Yeah. Everyone knows how to do it, but nobody really does it. All right. Simple way to build up some flexibility and allow you to move better. You won't have to work as hard to actually walk and move because your muscles will be a lot more relaxed. You're not so tense and tight. Posture, one of my favorite ones. Same thing like this, clasping them, but this time just hold them like this, straighten your elbows, squeeze your shoulder blades back, drive your hands down toward the ground, look up like that, and try and extend your arms like this. Squeeze, 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 five to 10 seconds. Come on back, do it again. Together, elbow straight, shoulders back, head up, drive them down, squeeze back. Oh man, it stretches everything in the front, it strengthens the shoulder blade muscles, improves that posture, opens everything up. That's a really simple, awesome one. And without a doubt, one of my most favorite ones is called wall angels. This is really tough for a lot of people. It's a strengthening and a stretching exercise. But basically, he should be standing a little further back against the wall. So that, that's for somebody that's kind of first starting off. You want to start here and kind of go against the wall like this. You want to, ideally want to keep your heels, your butt, your head, your shoulders, your elbow, and your hands against the wall. I can't do it because of this right here. But when you stand like this, just like snow angels, you just bring your arms up and together, trying to keep everything against the wall. Hold for two seconds. Come on back down. All the way up, hold for two seconds, come on back down. It's really pretty hard for most people to do because they're so accustomed to this, they're not accustomed to better posture. That's the single best posture exercise you can do. Exercise. Do we need another study that comes out that tells you exercise is good for you? The answer is no. And it has a lot to do with energy as well. Flexibility, we just talked about it. Aerobic exercise, anything that makes you breathe a little heavier, anything that gets your heart pumping. Hopefully you can get to the point where you're sweating a little bit. But it's running, it's jogging, it's, it's playing a sport, even tennis and things like that. Anything that's gonna get you running around, increasing your, your, your breathing. Anaerobic is anything that's more or less like lifting weights. You don't have to consume a whole bunch of extra oxygen, so they call it anaerobic. So weight lifting, you can do some yoga, some Pilates, uh, all sorts of different exercises. Try and get a variety of all three. That would be the best. I would certainly stretch every day. How often? Every day. Every day. How long? Fantastic. You guys are fantastic. Fantastic. Watch your mouth.
You. You. Your thoughts can dictate how you feel and how you function. This has a lot to do with it. So if somebody says, hey, how you doing? How often are you here? Eh, not bad. I'm okay. I'm not really bad, I'm just not bad. I mean, that's, that's just, that's not a very positive way to say it. You know, I'm getting by, I'm hanging in there. I'm lousy, I'm terrible. I'm exhausted. Pfft, love this one. Don't ask. I can't even muster up enough energy to explain how I feel, that's how bad I'm doing. I mean, you're just setting yourself up for disaster. Why not just lie to yourself? Say you're pretty good. Pretty good is kind of like not bad. You know, it's not bad, I'm pretty good, but it sounds a lot more positive. What about good? What about great? How about awesome? Even if you don't feel awesome, just say it. You say it enough time, the little trap door to your subconscious is going to open up, that word of awesome is going to settle down into your brain, and you're actually going to start to believe that you feel awesome. And then you're actually going to start feeling awesome. Simple. Why not go and say, hey, I'm near perfect and closing the gap? Who's perfect? Nobody. But I'm real close. I'm near perfect, getting better every day. Lie to yourself if you don't think you are, but eventually you will start to believe it. Watch your ears. Actually, it's the six inches in between your ears. We said the most influential part on energy is what? It's the brain. Yeah, because it controls everything. So, studies suggest that up to 80% of fatigue is mainly due to psychological factors. It's not the fact that you, you know, have a ton of, well, it is the fact that you have a ton of work. But, you know, if you're physically active and you're running around, that certainly contributes to some fatigue. But what goes on up in here between the six inches between your ears is what really affects how you function most. So if you looked at your previous um, thing about how to be happy, would that help? Absolutely. Big time. Yeah. Surround yourself with positive people. You ever walk into the room and someone you just don't really get along with is there? What happens? Oh, I didn't know he was going to be there. Yeah. Oh, and you just start thinking about all those things, and your posture just sinks. You know, you try and do everything you can to avoid. Maybe you hide behind the point says. I don't know. You know some, somehow to try and avoid them. But what's the opposite is true, too. You walk in, you go, I didn't know Renee was going to be. I love talking with Renee. How you doing? It's been a while. Since you. you know, you just you light right up. And you just get in a better mood, and all of a sudden, boom, your, your posture and your energy changes. I find that if I don't get along with someone, that when I walk in and I'm really positive, it changes them as well as me. And you can, absolutely. Yeah, remember what we said about the bright colors? The image you project actually can get projected back to you as well. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of science behind all that stuff. So you're if you smile, right. you get a smile, too. Yeah, just a simple smile. Listen to inspiring music. Listen to the comedy ch comedy channel. Listen to Marianne. Yeah. Yeah. Laugh. Uh, we came home. I was with my brother at a at a seminar, a uh, weekend seminar, just about a month or a month and a half ago. And we got back late. It was like 11:30 by the time we pulled into my driveway. He drove. But around 10:30, uh, 11 o'clock, you know, we were both exhausted. He was exhausted. We pulled over. We got some gas. Grabbed some water. Drank some water. You know, we kind of woke up a little bit. But I said, you know what, let's listen to some comedy. And we put some comedy on, and some of our favorite comedians came on. Man, we were la we were practically crying. I was almost worried he would crash, because you know, we were crying. So that would be good if you're tired at any moment, yeah. right? Absolutely. Listen to that. Yeah. So when we got, when we got to, uh, to my house, I stayed in the car an extra five to ten minutes because we were enjoying it so much. I, I had so much energy, I didn't want to go back in the house right away. That's good. Yeah. So something as simple as that. And turn off the news. Is it ever good? You know, maybe once in a while, but most of the stuff is just dreary, drab, bring you down. So if it's not really enlightening, get it out of your brain. Breathe. Everybody thinks that deep breaths, they got to do yoga and do ohms. Okay, that's fine. I'm not against ohms, but you don't have to do ohms and sit in a yoga pose in order to do deep breath exercises. No, we, we've done these a bunch of times here. I always talk about doing this in for four, hold for eight, out for eight. And basically, the, 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 the goal is to just try and breathe in as much oxygen as you possibly can for a count of four seconds. Hold it. Then you got to hold it for a count of eight seconds. And then you blow it out slowly for a count of eight. And then you got to breathe a little normal. And then take another deep breath in and do that. Breathe a little normal. You'll get really super lightheaded. Most people do the first time they're doing it. 
when you inhale all this oxygen, you're expanding your chest. And by the way, when you do that, notice what happens to your posture. You, again, come up. It's just natural. More energy is with better posture is more energy. It just, that's just the way it works. So you expand your lungs. You get a lot more oxygen in. You squeeze the lymph nodes to get some of the junk and the garbage moving along. When you breathe it out, you breathe out a ton of the toxins and the carbon dioxide and all that stuff. And your brain gets like a sudden surge of oxygen, which is why some people get lightheaded. Some people almost feel like they're going to pass out. They start getting spots because their brain's like, holy cow, I didn't know this is what it was like to be alive. This is awesome. And it doesn't know what to do. So it almost shuts down. Well, that's not really true. But that's what happens when you just start simply breathing in oxygen. I would recommend doing it out in the country and not next to an exhaust pipe. Yeah, because that, <laughs> that wouldn't be very beneficial. And you can use some lavender oil or some other essential oils. Lavender has been shown to be very mood stabilizing and enhancing, energy producing, all sorts of things. There's a lot of stuff with these essential oils. You can check them out. See your... Hey, it's chiropractor. Hello. He's always happy. Hello. Yes, because I do, I pretty much do, this whole slide is like my day. I mean, I just, the, most of the stuff that's on these slides is just something I do quite regularly. Um, the number one most common improvement noted among all new patients is a significant increase in energy levels. We have questionnaires that we give to patients you know, every 12 visits. Here, fill this out. How's things coming along? Well, hands down, without a doubt. 99.9% .9 of the people circle increased energy, they circle improved posture, they circle improved flexibility, and they circle improved digestion. Those are the, the, the four top things that seems like everybody benefits from with chiropractic care. It's just your body working better. It's your brain that runs everything is starting to run it better. So how is this possible? It's because adjustments, and that's what we do to the spine, we realign and we adjust it. It helps reduce the amount of stress and strain within your nervous system. And your nervous system controls how everything works. If you have a well, efficiently run nervous system that's not stressed out, it's going to run your whole body without, with very little effort. If it's highly overstressed out, it's not going to work very well. It's going to require a lot of energy to do these simple tasks. Your brain controls everything. What does it control? Everything. everything. It controls your arms, your legs. It controls your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidney, your stomach, all those things. Every day, billions and billions of messages travel down your spine out to your organs telling them what to do. So how do you measure the stress in your nervous system? There are parts of your nerves that you can feel and the majority you can. Sensory nerves is what most people think of with the chiropractor. My back hurts, my neck hurts, I got a headache, I got carpal tunnel syndrome, my foot's going to sleep. Those are sensory nerves, but the motor nerves and the autonomic nerves that control your muscles and your organs, there's no sensation to them whatsoever. So, the way we know that we can measure the stress in them is to do some pretty simple advanced diagnostic scans on them. And these scans allow us to see how different parts of that nervous system are working. So let me show you what these things look like. This is a scan of the nerves that control your muscles. Now there's an abnormal or stressed out one, and there's a normal one. What color are all these bars? Yeah. Does the left side look like a mirror image of the right side? Yeah, there's, there's symmetry and balance to it. And we look for a pear shape. Those are the three things we look for on the nerves that control the muscles. All right. This is a scan of somebody sitting down in what we call the neutral position. So they're sitting down with their feet flat, their palms are up, there's no backrest, and they're just sitting up with decent posture. This should take very little effort for you to do. And if it does take very little effort, you look like that. This is a scan of somebody that is working quite a bit harder. The colors tell us different levels of stress or strain. If we see green, green shows there's some mild stress. If we see blue, that's a lot more significant. The body's working a lot harder at those regions just to simply sit out. And then if we see red, red means it's severe. It's working way too hard. So at the end of the day, who do you think is going to have more energy and feel better? That person or that person? This one? No. That one? Got a lot of bright colors. Yeah. They're very colorful. <laughs> like our office right now. But no, you don't want those colors. So here's a real life person. Here's someone who came in. She had headaches. That was it. Uh, but after we started going through her history, she also had zero energy level. 
I mean, she was just dragging. She would tell me, you know, she seems like she sleeps almost eight hours a night, but every time she wakes up, she feels like she didn't sleep at all. We all know people like that. She also had some uh, thyroid issues going on. She had some constipation and digestive issues. That was her health history, basically. So after a series of adjustments, we do a rescan. And the rescan comes out pretty colorful still. But do you think it's a lot less? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's still got some color going on in there. And still some going on in here. But obviously it's not nearly as bad as when she first started. And then we had another follow-up scan. And how does that one look compared to the previous two? Big difference. What do you think she started to report to me on those first and second questionnaires? You think maybe her energy levels improved? Yeah, I would say so. It's pretty obvious when you take a look at how much energy she was exerting to sit there versus what she should be doing. She also had next to no headaches, and her constipation and digestion basically regulated out. Thyroid was still an issue, because thyroid takes a pretty long time. Most of your chronic organ type issues uh, take quite a while. One more, one more picture there, and then I'll, I'll answer your question. And that's what we're striving to look like. Now, will we get her back to being totally perfect? <laughs> it's pretty darn close as of now, compared to what she was before. But as long as we can get the majority of these nerves working within normal limits, they don't have to be perfect, but they're a lot less stressed out than what they used to be. Yes, Mary. I've been here for about two years, and I didn't get that kind of results. Energy and stress comes from all sorts of things. Some people start off with a lot of, a lot of stressful issues, and they get better. Some people start off and a lot of their stress comes from other things as well. That's why we talk about diet a lot. We so talk about go, exercise. you can go for one and then maybe get worse, do well and then get worse just Absolutely. because it's stressful. One yeah. of my um, friends, she's, in, she's a professor at uh, SUNY in health and wellness, and uh, she said she can tell me about whether I have stress in terms of how my stomach is because stress a lot of times goes straight to your belly. Sure. And if you start losing some of that, it, you know, because you're doing various different things. Stress will manifest itself in, in different ways to different people. Absolutely. And digestion and, and abdominal issues is a lot. has a lot to do with stress. Yeah. So the role of, of adjustments is, is really simple. It's just to reduce the amount of stress within your nervous system. That's my job. And we get great results for so many different things. And it's not that I'm treating constipation or diarrhea. I'm not treating headaches. I'm not treating sciatic. I'm not treating pain. I'm just simply relieving the stress and strain within that nervous system. And your body is what heals itself. That's what it does. Drugs don't heal you. Drugs just keep you quiet long enough. You know, keep your symptoms down and your body eventually heals it. And sometimes you can come off the drugs and sometimes you can't. But it's not the drug that does the healing, it's your body that eventually heals itself on its own. That's really important, you should all understand that. So that's what we do, that's how chiropractic can help uh, increase, supersize your, your energy levels, just by simply that alone. And for those of you that just, ah, I don't care, I just, I just want to take some supplements, and you just give me the easy way out. You know, I don't want to do any of this lifestyle change and do the things that I need to do to keep my body healthy running what, running well. Just tell me what I can do. I know the energy drinks will send me to the ER twice as much now as they did four years ago. Um, and I know it's not good to just take lots of drugs for energy. So what can I do naturally? Okay. Here's your list of some supplements that you can definitely look into getting. We've already spoken about some of them. And now you kind of understand why. B vitamins. They're also known as the nerve vitamins. They can actually increase your energy, and they can actually stabilize and, and, and downplay some of, the, some of the nerves as well. Like you might have overstimulated nerves, you can't focus, you can't concentrate. You take some B vitamins, it could actually stabilize you with that, so it can bring down that energy level on some of those things. But if you're deficient in them, you can also ramp up if you're feeling just lethargic and worn out. So B vitamins is a really great way to just naturally get some better supplements in there to try and increase your energy levels. Magnesium, that's another really great one. Vitamin D, we've spoken about that one. I would love for you to get it naturally, always naturally through the sun, but in the events that you can't do that, start supplementing with some vitamin Where do you D. Get magnesium, well. from? magnesium is uh, basically every, every, almost every nutrient, vitamin or mineral, is found in vegetables. Okay. Just eat fistfuls of vegetables all day long. 
a challenger. You know, try and get full. Just keep on eating them because there is they're they're just they're loaded with everything. Omega threes. It's a good fat. Your brain is made up of water and Fats. Yeah. fat. You guys have fat, watery heads. It's wonderful. I love it. So, give yourself plenty of nice, clean water, and certainly start giving yourself some omega threes. I eat what I think to be a fairly clean diet. I definitely still supplement with omega threes because I just know it's that important. Ginseng is another product you can get. It's been equated to coffee as well, ounce for ounce. So it's still, it's you know, it's it's a it's a stimulant. It's going to raise up your energy levels, uh, but I would use it cautiously. You know, if you really wanted a boost of energy here and there, I would say, okay, go ahead and grab some ginseng. But to take on a regular basis, no. I'm a big advocate, obviously, of trying to do things the way you're supposed to, adapting to healthy wellness, lifestyle, and that will allow your body to function like it's supposed to. But these are some things you can use sporadically. And CoQ10. CoQ10, I would recommend to uh, people that do intense training, athletes, high athletes, uh, marathon runners, Ironmen, uh, you know, even if you're just uh, training and, and lifting weights pretty hard or, or exercising pretty hard, or if you're on multiple medications, what, particularly what statin drugs. Coenzyme Q10, it's just a, it's a component that's part of something called the Krebs cycle, that's one of your energy producing pumps that's... So you don't get it level. through foods, you just get it through the house store? Yeah, to be honest with you, I have no idea where else you would get it from. Your body produces it naturally, uh, but like, would Brussels sprouts have it? I don't think so. So CoQ10 is something that you normally produce, but if you're taking medications, it affects the production of that CoQ10, which now they're saying anytime you're on a statin drug, you should definitely be taking CoQ10, right? Because that has a lot to do with heart health as well. It's causing heart issues. By actually, it's ironic, you're taking the cholesterol medications that are causing heart issues when it was supposed to be helping it, and they're finding that CoQ10 is playing a major role with that. So, that would be for someone who's on statin drugs or some other medications or your uh, marathon runners and highly trained athletes. So, those are your supplements in a nutshell. Closing thoughts, as always, you know, this health thing, it's really not that complicated. I say this almost every closing thought. <laughs> But it really isn't. I didn't say it was easy. Once you start doing it, it becomes routine and becomes easy. But it's a lot, you know, change is tough for a lot of people. So I understand that. So do it slow. Don't do everything at once. But do something. Make some sort of change somewhere. All right? But most importantly, make sure that it's fun. Because, you know, if you hate running, I hate running. You know? But that's like the one thing that you want to do to improve your health to start exercising is running because you heard it's really good for you. You're not going to last with it. Go on a bike ride. Go for a, 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 you know, a fast-paced walk with a friend or something. Do something that you're going to enjoy. And then maybe down the road you can start adding some things that you didn't really enjoy before, but now you've grown to like because you've made baby steps to get toward them.